So the history of uh, science and and how why we even got interested in exercise as a potential uh, way to slow uh, improve or slow cognitive decline in older adults, um, particularly those with mild cognitive impairment or MCI, really um, started from some work early work that was completed in the early 1990s. Um, and this work uh, did not involve people with mild cognitive impairment, but it involved people who are cognitively normal, uh, you know, no symptoms, um, but they, um, you know, but they're older. And so this uh, this work was completed by Art Kramer at University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. And what I think for us and who do uh, exercise work, it was groundbreaking because here's this, um, what he showed was that if you get people to exercise. And I mean, structured exercise, you know, regular four times a week following a certain program. Um, and over at least six months, you can see change in brain. Um, and, you know, which is a, always a big concern for uh, those of us who are all growing older, uh, because uh, those changes are more prominent as we get older. And so any intervention we can do, we can put, you know, we can test and hopefully roll out in clinical practice would be one that can might slow that process. And so that was what was so interesting to us is in his original study. And I, I had just, I mean, it's so long ago, but it was so, um, it's such an instrumental, it's such a, a key ingredient for the work that we're doing. And now it was about 150 older adults. Um, they had you know, no MCI, no, probably there was MCI in there, but, you know, it wasn't detected at baseline, but no, no one with dementia. And it was a six month uh, randomized control trial with people were assigned either to a higher dose uh, aerobic training. So, you know, get your heart rate up there with uh, with your breathing rates high. So that these folks were at about 70 to 85 percent heart rate reserve. So. They, they're up there. So like, for example, uh, someone with 70 years old might be at a heart rate, uh, uh, a working heart rate of about 128 beats per minute. So it's, it's not a, a casual walk. Uh, so that was one group. And then the other group was a stretching balance. And that kind of served as the control group. And so they were supervised by a trainer. They had to go somewhere. They had to get out of their house. They had a lot of social support. And after six months, they looked at the cognitive data and then also later some brain imaging data. And lo and behold, cognition um, changed. It improved for people who were in the aerobic group, but not so much in the, in the, in the stretching and balance group. And the focus really was on executive function. That's where we see all, we've all, for the last 20 years, that's where most of us have seen any activity uh, and exercise improves executive function. We haven't, you know, most of us have not found anything, any improvements in memory per se. And there's a lot of reasons for that. It, it may not be that memory doesn't change. It may be we're using the wrong tools. Uh, so that's something that's been continued to be explored over time. So that study was uh, really monumental. They also showed some uh, uh, not too much longer that work continued and they showed some brain changes as well. And so I was I think this is very interesting, although I'm not quite sure how to interpret it, but they showed volume increases in areas that are uh, at high uh, that typically show volume decreases with advancing age. They showed volume increases for the aerobic group relative to the stretching group. So, you know, that always gets you thinking like, what, what, what is exactly happened there? Um, what volumes increasing? So there's just been a lot of theories about what's going on. But the point was that it did have a brain effect and it did transit, it did translate into improved cognition. So that work, that's that kind of hallmark work that started years ago that kind of, kind of uh, catapulted the field into starting to think, well, hmm, if it works for cognitively healthy older adults, could we possibly slow down decline in people with mild cognitive impairment? And so I, that's what I started. I read those results. I was at an Alzheimer's Association conference long ago, and everybody was talking, each session was talking about mm, the, the risk reduction of managing blood pressure, risk reduction of uh, managing, you know, cholesterol, their cholesterol levels, risk reduction of managing depression and mood. And and then I got to think, well, no one's talking about the one intervention that could have a positive effect on all of these. So why aren't we studying this in mild cognitive impairment as a risk reduction strategy? So went home and wrote two grants and got both of them. They're both baby grants, uh, just small pilot studies, one with the Alzheimer's Association, one with the American Diabetes Association, two different populations, but both at risk for cognitive decline. I got both of them. So I decided I'm going to test Art Kramer's model and these people who are at high risk for decline. Let's see. 
Let's see if that helps. And so both studies were positive. Uh, we saw the same exact thing that Art Kramer saw with a change in executive function. I didn't take, I, it was a, you know, it was a, it was a pilot study. So I didn't have money for the brain imaging at the time. So, uh, but still it was enough to set the stage for other studies. So since then we've, I've completed several other studies continuing to get more and more measures. So now my studies all have brain imaging and they all have cerebral spinal fluid collection and, we're trying to test the limits on memory testing, maybe trying some different tools. And so, you know, if jump to, jump to, to 2016 is when um, the excerpt study uh, was uh, proposed. Uh, 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 Paul Azen from the Alzheimer's Disease Cooperative Study at the time came to me and said, wow, Laura, these are interesting results. Why don't we plan a multi-site trial? Why don't you come on board with the ADCS and let's plan a multi-site trial with Carl Kopman. It was my partner at the time, who's a very renowned animal researcher in the area of exercise. 